Hey gang, welcome back for another video here on Jochem. Okay gang, so this is gonna be another one of the shorter videos and all we're gonna talk about in this video is kind of just introduce, get a little introduction to our new friend, Fennel, who I'm sure, or Fennel, depending on how you say it, uh, I'm sure we've we bumped into Fennel before, but now we're gonna kind of, you know, rub some shoulders, get a little bit better acquainted with it, uh, some properties, and something we don't really do on Jochem, but a bit of naming, just to make sure if you run into some common names or just some very, you know, uh, you get a situation where there's just a text written and you need, you need to know what the structure is, just a smidge of bit of naming, you know, why not? We'll indulge. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about with phenols, and let's just kind of figure out what makes up a regular phenol. So, this is what we have right here. It's just a benzene ring with an OH off of it. Now, if you're thinking back to uh, the days we did hardcore carbonyl chemistry, you know, in the days of enolates, enols, all that, I hope you're thinking that, okay, I understand where the name phenol comes from, right? This is like benzene ring right there, and here's the alcohol part. But you might also be thinking, why doesn't this structure want to rearrange itself to be a ketone, right? Because we know that if we kind of just dissect this part right here, this is an enol, and we know that, uh, let me get these arrows right, through keto enol tautomerism, I'll abbreviate that, right? We know that this thing much rather prefers the keto form, right? Because of the bonds that you get here versus here. So why is Phenol always in that conformation. Why do we find it so confidently and stable in this conformation? Well, I think the answer might be easy. I might just be belaboring the point, but it's clearly because the energetic benefit of having this aromatic ring, because if we did have a situation, and we will see something like this further in this video series, where we get something like this, we truly lose the aromaticity of the ring, right? So this is one situation where the enol form is preferred over the keto form. So that's kind of what makes enols, or phenol, sorry, like phenols interesting in my opinion. So what I wanna do uh, is just go through the acidic, like the, S, uh, the acidic characters of phenols, uh, super quick, super short, then do some naming and call it a video. Okay gang, let's do some acid-base chemistry with phenols. All right, so if you take a look here, I just have regular old phenol, and then I have butyl lithium, a very strong base. So it's this high H on the oxygen in the alcohol in phenol that is, right, the H plus that we'll be donating. So butyl lithium, very strong base, will have absolutely no trouble pulling that off and dumping the electrons onto oxygen. So if we look at the conjugate base, which you can, if you're slick, you can call it phenoxide, right? It's just kind of an alkoxide, but with phenol, it's a phenol oxide. We would have this. And if you're wondering, you know, how good is this acid-base reaction, the pK of phenol is about, it's listed in like, you know, eight to 10. This would be closer to the 10 side of things, right? So I'm, I might even just call it 10, roughly 10. So. Why is it so good? And I know you are all organic sleuths at this point, and it's obviously because of the resonance you can draw, right? So if I'm drawing my arrow, double-headed arrows, because I'm drawing resonance, I could swing these down, right? Form a double bond there and kick these electrons up. Whoops. So if I draw the next resonance structure, lone pair there, didn't touch this, didn't touch that, double bond there. I could go even further by swinging these down, kicking electrons up here. We're just playing ring around the rosy at this point. And then one final time, I could swing these down, kick electrons up there, take this down here, there, here, here, and here. Okay, cool. So I'm sure that's not earth shattering, right? You might be thinking, okay, Joe, what's the big deal? Well, I think you might find this part cool. We can actually, uh, depending on what groups we put on our benzene ring, actually, you know, raise or lower the pKa. I'm gonna show you two examples. 
So in this one example right here, I am just going to, instead of just having regular old phenol, I'm going to show you what happens when we put on a nitro group. And it's more specifically an electron withdrawing group, but something that can actually participate in the resonance, right? It has, it's large enough and it has some P orbitals and some double bonds to where it can actually play a factor in the resonance. And you're going to see how that works. Okay. So I'm not actually going to, just to save some space, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of have it deprotonated as is right here. So basically just this, but with the nitro group on the bottom. And yeah, that's okay. We'll just go ahead. All right. So swing electrons down, kick them up over here. Lone pair, double bond. And I don't need the nitro group yet, so I'm going to abbreviate it like that. Then I'm going to swing these down. And instead of shoving this into the nitro group so far, I'm just going to bounce it up as a lone pair on that carbon. Okay, so one more time. Yet again, double bond here, double bond, double bond, lone pair. And then I'm going to draw the nitro group out in full, making sure I don't lose any charges because there's a lot of them in this group. Okay, cool. So what I can actually do is I can actually draw, swing these down. I can say, I'm going to make a double bond between the carbon and the nitrogen, and then I can kick up electrons here. So then I have a double bond on that nitrogen. I have a lone pair. I have an oxygen that I didn't touch over here with all lone pairs. Then I have another, or an oxygen rather, another oxygen over here with just lone pairs. I still have a plus charge on nitrogen because it comes from the fifth column of the periodic table and it has four bonds here, one, two, three, four. So that's another valid resonance structure and I can even take this one again and instead of having it, having the electrons go this way, I'm gonna cheat, I'm gonna show resonance going over here and I can have one more resonance structure like this. So nitrogen, that would look like this. So I hope you're seeing that by the introduct, oh, whoops, and I forgot to raise this up here. Yikes, very bad. By introducing this nitro group, we add yet one more resonance structure. We have four total here. We actually have five here, and the pKa drops to 715, right? So that's crazy. We went down a few orders of magnitude by introducing a group that had the ability to play in with the resonance, right? Further lowering the overall resonant, resonance hybrid structure's energy, right? Because now we went from four to five um, resonance structures and they're good ones. So yeah, if, if you, and if you add even more, like if you were to add If you even had something like this, the pKa would be even lower. I think this one's maybe around six or so or something like that. So that works in the, the advantage of making your phenol even, your phenol derivative even more acidic. But also, if you were to, you know, instead of that, if you added something like just a methyl group, Right, you can see we're adding negative charges around the ring. This would actually make your pKa go up. You'd have a worse acid, slightly, because you're actually adding a slight bit of uh, electron density, right? Because alkyl groups are loose electron donators. So be on the lookout. If you ever get a problem, I'd say it'd be something more like this. You might just get phenol. You get, oh, this has a pKa of maybe 10, 9, and then maybe they, someone introduces something extra, like a phenol with a nitro group. And it explains, oh, the pK is actually much lower. Explain why. You just have to draw the resonance. And you can sh show that by adding a group that can participate in the resonance, you actually increase that structure's ability to be an acid, lower the pKa. Okay, gang. So, probably too much on the acid-based stuff, but I think it's important. It's crazy how much resonance can just still be a factor this far into OCHEM. So what I want to do is just talk a little bit about naming and then close the book on phenols, but just for this video. 
Okay, gang, let's just round out this video with a smidge bit of naming. Okay, so let's kind of work our way this way and try not to get, you know, allured by the shiny futures of the, or examples of the future. But let's start off right here. All right, so in this little example, so before we really dig in, it's important to know that, remember in naming, oh my God, what was that? In naming, right, we have to have like a parent chain, right? So in this world of benzene, right, we can use benzene as kind of that parent chain and list things off like one through six, right? Because one, two, three, four, five, and six. So benzene can be our parent, but if you have kind of like a common name for your ring that involves what, like a substituent, you can use that. So in our case, right, if you are saying, okay, I want everyone to know that this is phenol and it has a few things off of it, feel free to go ahead and do that too, right? But it has, you know, and I say that, but it has to play, it has to abide by the highest priority stuff, right? Okay, so let's take a look right here. So this is really just phenol with a methyl group. So feel free to just say that this is 4-methyl-phenol, okay? Because, right, because you're going to call this phenol, that automatically gives the alcohol that's part of phenol, a priority group of 1, priority number of 1, then 2, then 3. You can see we hit the methyl group at 4, so that's how we get 4-methyl. And then remember, right, we always would put commas between numbers, and then between numbers and letters, we do dashes, but at the very end, right, or if it's like, you know, letters, letters, we run everything together. So four methyl phenol, okay? Okie doke, so moving on. So we have a little bit more going on in this example, right? I'm gonna make some space. A little bit more in this example, but what you can definitely do is just say, okay, I want to make phenol my parent chain. So that's what I'm gonna say is the most important. So right here, I'm gonna give that a one. And then remember, we have two choices. We can number this way around the ring, or we can number this way around the ring, but we want to do two things. We wanna make sure that we're doing, giving the highest priority group the lowest number, and we also want to you know, give out the lowest numbers we can. So that what does both of those things is by going one, two, making the nitro group third, the chloride fourth, and then five and six, okay? So what we can do here, right, is now we, we, have, we have four chloro, right, just like in our alkane days, three nitro, that's called a nitro group, when it's just on, uh, and then we have phenol, right? So just like in those good old alkyl days, we need to make sure we alphabetize, right? So we have C and N, so clearly this is gonna be first in our name, this will be second in our name, so the name of this bad boy is 4-chloro, then a dash, 3-nitro, and then run it together, phenol. Okay, cool. So let's take a look at this one. So this, might, this is an example where we need to make a call. So this isn't an expanded, but I'm going to do it for us. CO2H is a carboxylic acid, okay? So on our list of kind of priority groups... Alcohol, carboxylic acids take precedent over alcohols. So if we just had this, this would be benzoic acid, right? Because it's benzene, but it's an acid, benzoic acid, right? So what we can do is we can kind of say our parent chain is going to be benzoic acid, okay? Meaning, and I'll draw some lines here, meaning what we can do, we can name this two different ways. One, two, three. Three, and I could have done this over here. I'm going to show you a different way you can do this. We could call this 3-hydroxy benzoic acid. Or if you want to be slick, and like I said, I could have done this over here, we can actually do M-hydroxy benzoic acid. And I hope you organic slick people are thinking, okay, yeah, it could be 3 hydroxybenzoic acid, or this is a meta relationship. This is a 1-3 relationship. I could have very easily labeled this paramethylphenol. No space there. 
okay? So those relations, like, you can only do that when you have two things, but just know that that's possible. Right here, we couldn't do orth ortho pair or whatever because there's one, two, three relationships going on. Okay, so this is interesting. Now, what do we do with this? So we kind of have two things that, it's like a double phenol almost. So how do we handle this? So when, when you have a situation like this, it might even just be easiest to pick benzene as kind of your parent chain. So then you can just label these as hydroxy groups. So in here, I would say I would label this as, it doesn't matter where we number because we'll still get one for either way. You could do this one, four. Uh, uh, this would be benzene dial. A little bit of an interesting example. That's why I kind of wanted to throw it in here. So that's how we would do that. And down here, very similarly, right, we would number this way to give everything the lowest numbers. So this would be one, two, three, benzene trial. Okay, and some other thing is that, oh, I, I wanted to throw in these common names here. You might see these. This is hydroquinone. We'll deal with quinones later in this uh, series. And then this is, um, Actually, I wrote the common name for this, but it's weird. Who cares? Okay, gang. So just wanted to talk about phenols and their acidic character. I wanted to mention how we can alter their acidic character. Uh, I want to talk about why they like the enol position, like enol conformation over the keto conformation, and then round it out with a little bit of naming for old times' sake. Okay, so uh, kind of a bland video. I'm sorry about that, but I promise you, some chem the chemistry to come is pretty cool. So I'll see you all in the next video.